So, uh, could you please introduce yourself and what company you're with? I'm Ben Cloward. I'm a senior technical artist, and I work at BioWare on Star Wars The Old Republic. Okay. Uh, when did you first realize you were morphing into a technical artist from your original role, and what was your original role? Well, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, so, I started out as an animator, and I was an animator for about eight years, and I started to get frustrated because whenever... Um, our character artist would give me a model. The art director told me, now you have two or three days to finish the animation on the model. And generally when I would rig a character, if I were gonna make a really good rig, that would take two days. And so then I wouldn't have time left over to do the animation. And so I ended up having to just cut corners on the quality of my rig, which meant that I was really frustrated when I was trying to animate. And so, um, I talked to some other people that said they were automating the process of their rigging uh, so that it could save them time. So I decided to try to learn that. So I started teaching myself Mac script just a little bit at a time. I learned how to create one bone first and then one bone and then a child bone. And um, it just kind of progressed from there. And slowly I built up uh, this Mac script that um, would automatically rig a character. And so I, I cut this two-day time frame of rigging a character down into about three seconds where I could just push the button and it would make the rig. Um, wow. And the really nice thing about that is every time I thought of something else that I wanted to be on the rig, I would just add it to the script. And then every rig that I made after that uh, had those new features. And so it just kept getting better and better and better instead of me spending two days building the same old thing that I'd built before. Um, so that was kind of what transitioned me into the role of a technical artist. Uh, in addition to that, um, I also kind of had a side interest in writing shaders. And so I learned that just on the side at home. Uh, and then eventually I was able to apply that at what I do at work. Uh, both really cool. So can you provide a, another example, maybe from a different project that you worked on that required your specific skills as a technical artist to, to solve? Sure. So. Um, actually, just this last week, um, we discovered that the bones of the mouth of our character were in slightly the wrong position. And that was across all of our Max files and all of our animations. And the, the art director did not like that because it made the teeth show uh, just slightly in, in the base pose. And so our lead animator was like, can, can we fix this somehow? And so. Um, I went off and wrote a script that would batch through all the Max files and open up each one and fix those keyframes. So instead of the animators, and we have like hundreds of Max files, so instead of the animators having to do that by hand, it would just automa automatically do that. Um, wow. See, that's huge. <laughs> that is absolutely huge. Uh, so how much self-directed learning did becoming an effective TA involve? you know, morphing from art to sort of art program or hybrid? Um, pretty much all of the learning that I've done has been self-directed because I started out as an animator. And uh, it was just kind of born out of this desire to do better work, to be able to save myself a lot of repetitive tasks. Um, and over time, I found that I kind of had more of an, imp an inclination to, um, to automate tasks than to actually do them manually and I found that I could use this skill to help other people automate what they were doing and, and solve problems that way. That's really cool. So like with the math that you've had to, to learn, did you already, like what math have you had to learn or what math did you know from, from coming from animation? And So in high school I decided that I hated math and I found a way in college to not take any math, which looking back now I, I realize was a major mistake. Um, because I use math every day at work. Um, my favorite thing to do is write shaders, and in order to write good shaders, you have to have a good understanding of linear algebra and matrix multiplication, and I really don't. <laughs> and I wish that I did, so if I were going to do it again, I would definitely go back to school and take a, a linear algebra class. Okay. Anything more far out there, esoteric? Uh, uh, generally, if there's a problem that's more esoteric, I'll go ask my programmer friends, like, how would you solve this? And, and they'll kind of give me a function that just does it. So I, okay. I try to avoid that. Okay. Uh, how about the low-level technical concepts? I mean, coming from animation to then, like, 
you know, maybe pipeline related work or with shaders. Uh, what what did you have to come to like really deeply understand to be be effective as a TA? So one of the principles that I'm just starting to get a hold of and understand better is good code structure. And this is something that a couple of the other tech artists and programmers at my company have taught, how it's better to uh, break up your, your code into manageable functions um, so that things are more compartmentalized and um, it's easier to debug um, before, like, when I was completely self-taught as an artist, I would just make a script and it would be like the entire script that did everything. Um, but I'm learning that it's much better to, to organize your code so that it's reusable uh, and easier to debug. Okay. Um, if there was one thing you could tell academics about the role of a technical artist, what would it be? Um, I think the most important role of a technical artist is a problem solver. Um, generally, when you go to an artist and they have a problem, they can tell you what visually looks incorrect, but they can't necessarily identify the root cause. And so, uh, a tech artist needs to be practiced in seeing what the surface um, what the surface issues are, but then to be able to dig down in and find out ah, this is what's actually wrong, and to be able to fix that. Um, and in terms of talking right to students, um, probably the best advice that I can give to a student is don't depend on just what the, the program is, is teaching you. Um, meaning like don't just do the assignments to get the grade and assume that you'll get a job when you're done because it doesn't work that way. Um, really you have to, it's important definitely um, to go to school, to be trained, to associate with your professors and the other students, but really whether or not you get a job is up to you. And so you have to go out, figure out what it is you need to know and how you need to teach yourself that and, and take responsibility uh, for your own future. Because if you just kind of rest on, well, you know, I got to be in that class and it was good enough, you're not going to get a job. And that is really great advice. <laughs> Anything else you want to tell? I mean, like, fill up the rest of memory. <laughs> uh, boy, um, well, being a tech artist is really fun. Um, and I love my job. And if it's something that, that you're looking forward to do doing, um, just, just work really hard. Um, pick one of the things that a tech artist does and get really good at it, whether it's rigging and skinning uh, or uh, writing scripts in Max Script or, or Mel or Python uh, or writing shaders. And if you know multiple things, that's good too, but you should definitely focus on at least one of these areas and get really good at it so that you have something to show uh, at a company so that you're well uh, practiced and once you get hired you can really uh, contribute uh, to, to the process of making the game. Wow. Ben, thank you very much. This has been wonderful. You're welcome. This is